Okay, the next tooth we're going to do is tooth number 14, the maxillary left first molar. So let's run through the anatomical structures. Okay, so we have the mesiobuccal cusp, the distobuccal cusp, we have the mesiolingual cusp, we have the distolingual cusp. And then we have this little vestigial cusp called the cusp of Carabelli. Now, if we notice these two cusps on the buckle, they're more or less even. The uh, distal cusp on the first molar is generally a bit larger than the second molar. And then we have the ling lingual cusp. On the mesial, it, if you notice, it slightly goes in towards the central pit and it kind of leaves a little bit of space for the cusp of Carabelli. Now, if we notice the oblique ridge right here, it's shaped like a smile, it's a curve, and it runs right into the distal triangular ridge right there. Sometimes it's divided, sometimes it's slightly divided, sometimes it's completely divided. So we have the two buccal cusps are more or less even. If you notice the second molar, the distal cusp is a bit smaller than the mesiobuccal cusp. So as we go back, it becomes even smaller on the third molar. A lot of times the third molar is kind of wacky shaped so that could be shaped as anything. Um, so we just have to remember it's the upper first molars structures that are most distinguishing is the oblique ridge and the cusp of Carabelli. The oblique ridge signifies that it's a maxillary molar. The cusp of Carabelli signifies that it's a maxillary upper first molar. The second molar does not have a cusp of Carabelli. So, with that said, the um, lingual cusps on the uppers are generally a little bit higher than the buccal cusps. So on the lowers is the opposite. So keep that in mind as you're waxing the lingual cusps. It could be sometimes at the same level but a lot of times or most of the time it's a little higher unless it's ground down because you're an older person or something. So let's go and start waxing.